here now, the pleasure to talk uh, more or less about the classroom, uh, from the classroom. Uh, I'm not anymore in the computer lab. Now we come to the users and uh, also the challenges in the future, because users, if they don't use what is developed, and we have heard today, what has been uh, today and yesterday, what has been developed, it's quite impressive what we have right now on um, on this uh, uh, in this field on open science technically. But now we have to focus on the users. Um, this is an ongoing research, what I will present here. It's, I just screened um, uh, literature, what is available, and also somehow I, I did it from my own experience as a lecturer, what uh, might be in the future, what might be seen as a challenge in the future. Uh, the main focus is on the findings. Findings are numerous but I just picked out a few findings then for the discussion and I will then wrap up this in the, in the conclusion. Uh, first of all, what um, um, bothered me most was the term open science. Because open science as such um, is a public good and this is since decades, maybe since centuries. It's an open good. and. Uh, as an open good, there is no monopoly on that, and all citizens have access to the open science. Therefore, my question, my first question was, what will be the revolutionary factor in higher education if we use open science? I also tried to find out the um, um, definition for open science with fit uh, which uh, should fit in somehow, but we have heard today already different uh, uh, definitions of open science. We even see that European Commission is not in line with European Union. They don't have the same wording for um, open science. European Union even has not um, a definition for open science. I will not stress this too much because we had have seen this already in previous um, presentation, uh, Simon talked about that, uh, Roberto and also, I think Ina also mentioned that. Now, what's, what, what was the objective of my work so far? It was uh, that to discover the new challenges open science provide for the tertiary education sector by focusing on selected issues. Higher education is huge. We have no starting point we have no ending point i just picked out uh, five um, topics for example globalization of education uh, teaching and learning methodology competition for talents and funding assessment uh, certification degrees and uh, awards and then cooperation with the real world these are the five leading uh, issues in discussion, I think, around the world. It's in Europe, it's in, in Ethiopia, and I think also beyond. Uh, findings in globalization and um, globalization of education are numerous. I just come to the challenges, where I see the challenges. And the most, uh, the main challenge I see uh, um, with the lecturers that they have to find suitable online courses or course elements what they could uh, incorporate in their traditional classroom lectures. Um, to initiate joint classrooms with world-class universities, this is not on the agenda. The first is not on the agenda of lecturers, the second is not on the agenda of lecturers. Uh, participating in joint laboratories for training Universities cannot offer the equipment required. Then, internationalizing lectures in terms of culture, language, and education. This is almost that what all we see also in policy briefs, what should be done in higher education. Then, teaching and learning approaches. Numerous uh, challenges. I picked out um, five challenges. Lecturers need to be enabled to handle new technologies that allows uh, to apply ICT technology suitable for 
interactive, collaborative and experimental learning and teaching approaches. Here we can also say student-centered approaches, we can bring in everything. We can say uh, problem-solving approaches, everything is in with that. Um, lecturers um, have to be or uh, have to get prepared to apply methods to dig and mine in big databases and to apply the findings then um, for their lectures um, and also in their research. This is a topic uh, non-statisticians not even touch. Um, experts from industry will become the new lecturers. Many universities, they have guest lecturers from industry and we will, of course, we will believe that uh, students are uh, give them more attention, they are inspired by lecturers from industry, but the lecturers from industry, they are not trained in delivering their courses, but <laughs> they do it as they do it in the company. They, they accept students as co-workers and they apply the methodology normally they apply uh, for um, what they apply in, in company trainings and so on. Then um, students are considered as active partners in the course. This I found in literature quite often, this was quoted. Then students of the each generation have learning approaches that uh, fit to their lifestyles. This we have also to consider. Most lecturers are uh, in, in their 50s, 40s, 50s. They do not uh, know anymore how students uh, organize their lives. Uh, coming to the competition of talents. The main challenge is to attract talented students for a, a traditional and also for the virtual class. Um, this is also because uh, students um, create competition then in the classroom. And if we see successful people, very often they have friends, they are also successful. If we then follow their curriculum, uh, their curriculum with there, and then we see they attended the same class, they had the same teachers, they, uh, they grew in competition to each other, and they are best friends, by the way. Um, attracting successful lecturers among uh, practitioners and academics to inspire students, and then, of course, the companies, the, uh, the role of the companies, finding companies willing to become strategic partner for training and research. And here we see also the, the competition, we see the market, because everyone wants to work with, I don't know, IBM or Ellen and Booth or uh, with, um, uh, what is, what are the others, uh, KPMG with the big companies. And uh, everyone is, or all the universities are knocking on these doors and they have also say yes or no. That means not everyone can be accepted. We cannot do, uh, or we cannot deliver service to everyone. But uh, universities have to find strategic partners. This is what uh, definitely they have to do. Coming to the assessment degrees, awards and certification challenges. This was somehow the safe uh, territory for the universities and uh, we did not struggle really a lot because we had our grades, we had the definition for grades and we applied that. We had also the, the exams, we had the exam period, everything was well structured. And now all in a sudden we, are, we don't focus anymore on exams, we rather focus on uh, competences. We have uh, online courses. A lot of students doing the whole degree on online courses and at the end they want to, to get um, um, the accreditation for their uh, degree. We need um, indicators to accredit uh, online courses and course elements suitable to complement traditional study programs. Finding um, an assessing procedure for the competences, as I, I mentioned before, and um, implementing quality assurance procedures for study programs in order to guarantee the value of degrees. And this is quite an issue because uh, very often we say students shop for degrees around the world, in Asia, 
in the United States, in Europe. In Africa, we have it as well. We, I know it from uh, Ethiopia that they really struggle to to accredit the, the degrees, what people have, what they got uh, through online trainings. And then, of course, the exam as such. Um, the discussion is about an exit exam uh, to unify the knowledge and skills of uh, students because we cannot trust anymore that the grade measures that what it should measure. Coming to cooperation with the real world, the challenges are finding suitable industry partners for teaching and research. The other uh, point is, I think, very, very important, and uh, this will come to all the universities, the unbundling uh, of study programs, that courses could be taken over by companies and study time in classrooms could be reduced. And then, of course, where we have a huge gap, this is um, open science as citizen science that uh, we do not really know how to integrate uh, citizens in, in the science, in our science, to give them space to trust their opinion. Uh, their traditional opinion doesn't fit maybe with science, with what needs to be backed and we need uh, to prove facts. Um, but nevertheless, we have to see this as a challenge. Uh, then in the discussion, I, I would like just to, to raise a few um, ideas. Um, how far the findings could make an impact in higher education in Africa? First of all, we have to see. Open science data is the content, we can also say the heart or the blood, of NRANS, of the NRANS uh, performance. Open science is inclusive, is freely accessible, is not monetizing and uh, we have to consider it as a, a public good at global level. Previously, open science was more or less the science on national level, not accessible for others except they traveled to the libraries, uh, maybe in France or in Germany or somewhere, but uh, we could not uh, share otherwise uh, open science. For universities, this, uh, this means now they have to partner with the most suitable universities around the world, uh, offer international high-level education at virtual level in joint classrooms and laboratories, bridge shortage of lecturers by integrating well-selected MOOCs from internet, what is available, uh, into the curriculum delivery, assist unexperienced lecturers with selected online courses and train young lecturers in their discipline integrating selected online courses into uh, universe uh, into universities training and learning centers in uh, uk i think uh, simon can then also confirm that the, in some universities phd candidates have to follow a uh, methodological courses, they have to do a course how to lecture. Even if uh, they do not uh, end up at university level, but they have to follow a course and they have to uh, finalize the course before they graduate with their PhD. Um, offer students access to material for um, solving problems. This brings now us to the new generation, to the each generation. That means they want to see autonomy, and we have to trust them that they are able to um, to work on problems by themselves. But we have to provide them with the material. They have to have access to to the material. Link students and lecturers to international research projects as active or passive uh, participants. Offer students world-class lecturers in all disciplines online. Um, deliver lectures um, in the most uh, modern uh, methodological approach. Allow students to create their own in, uh, learning environment. This goes somehow to get together with the autonomy of students. Enable students to study in their own pace. Uh, create uh, the room that best talents meet in virtual classroom and uh, laboratories. 
The next question where I tried, or the next challenge where I tried to, to find answers for is what are the preconditions that uni African universities could materialize uh, possible impacts? First of all, students and lecturers uh, should have a certain ICT literacy. This is a precondition. Uh, lecturers experienced in working uh, with MOOCs, lecturers experienced in managing online courses in the classroom, international partners uh, inviting students to participate in joint classrooms and laboratories, programs to train young lecturers and teaching and learning in teaching and learning methodology. We need guidelines and trainings to, uh, to apply online material for uh, solving problems. Um, partnership and membership contracts with international research projects that uh, lecturers and students can participate actively or passively um, in international research uh, projects then. Um, we need agreements with world-class universities to video stream lectures in all disciplines. Um, access to the most suitable ICT infrastructure and teaching environment. We need the guidelines and rules for, for students to, to create uh, their own learning environment, uh, tutorials for students to become independent learners, um, promotion strategy for talents to join the virtual classroom. Before I come to the conclusion, um, all what I have here pointed out does not involve budget because environments exist, infrastructure exists, at least uh, in, in the Ethiopian way, there is no need for any budget. And universities have the best uh, connections to top universities. In Europe, we don't have that very often. And in here they would have, and they have them to use it. Uh, in conclusion, the higher education institutions can cope uh, with the challenges caused by um, uh, open science if they take the assistance, the full assistance of environs, make university administration fit and enable students, particip uh, students participation in joint classrooms, joint laboratories, in um, online courses. Here very often uh, universities don't allow students to participate, or they allow students to participate, but they don't uh, uh, credit them the course, they don't get credits for that. Uh, use the possibility of uh, partner with world-class universities um, and offer uh, possibilities to lecture to, to increase their ICT literacy. Allow lecturers to design their own um, syllabi, we, we have learned yesterday that very often lecturers in Africa are not allowed to create their own syllabi. It's within the curriculum. Um, train lecturers uh, in applying collaborative, interactive and uh, experimental teaching methods, invite students to create learning and teaching environment suiting to their uh, lifestyle. Uh, raise awareness among lecturers and campus students that students can shop degrees around the world, that students get aware if they shop a degree, this will have a different uh, value. It's easy to buy, but it's hard to receive the degree. That means that they are really aware of that. And also the other uh, idea is to, to avoid the inflation of degrees. Uh, invite, uh, experts from all kinds of industries to lecture online courses and to apply companies working style as teaching and learning methodologies. And what uh, also is quite critical right now is that uh, universities have to find their niche. Traditional universities are losing grounds and need uh, to, to classify themselves they have to get a new identity, either as an elite university, mass university, niche university, local university, or as an executive university. In conclusion, in the final conclusion now, um, um, successfully coping with the situation or with the challenges, uh, African universities 
have to um, um, get closer to world-class universities, offer international courses to students, uh, to international student cohorts, um, attract international experts, deliver relevant content through collaboration, uh, interactive and experimental learning methods, and train uh, the students to become independent learners. Strengthening the entrepreneurial uh, spirit is also on somewhere on, on the top, but of course, um, it's, it's not seen by the academics as that important, but uh, this is one of the challenges that the entrepreneurial spirit has to be spread out through students, lecturers and researchers. And uh, we have to prepare also students for the competition in the labor market. Here are the, the summary, more or less, the vision where I see um, the African students and uh, how I see the African students. And for me, the African students is an independent and responsible learner in a global environment lecturers and institutional uh, institutions contribute the lectures um, contribution is seen in the provision of learning autonomy tailor-made curricula um, acceptance of individual learning environment lecturers uh, guidance by objectives open access um, uh, to open science and open courses um, recognition of online courses within individual curriculum. Then what's, um, what institutional framework should be set? We have first a boot track, what is also uh, quite an issue in all Africa, I think so, specifically if we discuss um, um, the, the copyrights and all that. Um, we have then um, the clear guidelines for students and lecturers. Um, for the delivery of the service, the provision of a rigid learning management system and then full access to end-run services. And if I wrap this up once again, then I have to say we don't need budget for that. It can be done without budget and we can succeed. We can uh, incorporate the open science and no budget. But we need the willingness of the researchers, of the lecturers, of the institutions, and we need their visions how a student in future should be treated at the university and what profile should they have at the end of that and what competences should they achieve. So far, this is what I can contribute to the new challenges we face.